Hello, this video is going to show how we can integrate the Eldway tool suite with IBM Engineering Requirements Management Doors Next. Now the starting point is of course Doors Next. And inside Doors Next, I've created a, a project called the Cache Register. And inside there, I've made a, a change to the Doors links. And what I've done is I've set it up so it actually has directional labels for the relationship, such as parent and child. And it's the parent that I'm particularly interested in in this particular moment. So that's the change that I've made to my project. So let's close that and take a look at this project. Right, so here we have the project and there are a number of modules. Let's start by taking a look at the system level requirements. And for each system level requirement, we can see that I've added a field called verification status and none of these have been verified. From here, I can navigate down to the high level requirements and again in the high level requirements they're all not verified again i can navigate from here down to my low level requirements and what i've done for the low level requirements is i've added an additional field here called reference and that is effectively the function that needs to be created to implement this low level requirement from here again i can navigate this time down to low level tests and for each low level test I have an associated test case file that needs to be created. And that test case file is going to effectively take these inputs and check that it gets these outputs. Finally, let's go back and take a look at the last document, and that is the high level tests. And the high level tests, I've associated a batch file that I want to execute. And what that's going to do is it's going to execute reading from this file it's going to capture to that file and then you'll compare the output file here with my reference file. So that's my cache register project. So now let's go to TB Manager. And inside TB Manager, first thing I've done is actually connected the source code and we can see we have all the files with the associated functions. And then I configured it to have effectively five different modules. So let's start by taking a look at the system level requirements and let's go and import the requirements from DOORS Next Generation. So in this particular case, I've let's check I can connect to DOORS Next Generation. So I'm going to check the connection here and that's good. So now we should be able to, to work with this. So I can load the projects and then I can load the modules. I've already done that. And as we can see, we have the various uh, attributes inside that module. And I've connected uh, these attributes to the LDRA or TB Manager attributes. And let's do a preview. And there we can see we have the requirement number, requirement name, requirement body. There's no reference, there's no parents. And then we have the requirement type, and the requirement status. So let's go and import these. OK, that's found the six requirements. And there we can see them inside the browser. If I now go into my relationships view, I should be able to grab all these six requirements and drag them into this view. So now let's bring in the next level, which is the high level requirements. So once again, I'm going to right click and import from the doors next generation. This time I want to load the high level requirement module. Again, I've set up the mapping and let's do a preview. And there we can see in this particular case, I have actually found the additional re reference here back to the parent. So let's go and import these. OK, so we'll just go and import those. And as we can see, it's found the required the relationship to the parent. And so here we're starting to see the traceability. Well, we can see it as well from this particular view here. So now let's go to the next level, which is the low level requirements. So once again, I'm just going to go and import from Doors Next Generation. This time I'm pulling in the low level requirements module. So once again, I've mapped the various attributes and we can see here that I've got the link back to the, the parent. So let's go and import these. Also, I've got a custom field here called reference. So let's do a preview. And there we can see we have the reference, which is a function that I want to map to that low level requirement. So let's import these. 
So now we should be able to see that these have been nested underneath. So once again, on our relationship view, we're now starting to get the traceability both upstream and downstream. So now let's go to the, the procedures and map down to the, the source code. Now in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all export the source description. I'm then going to export everything we've done so far into a, a TBM spec file, basically a, a, an XML file. And now I've got a Python script that will effectively generate the mapping for me by looking at that reference attribute that we imported. And so I should now be able to go and import that file that we've just created. So let's import the mapping. And there we have the source code mapping. I can now import that. And there we can see very clearly, well, why is this function here? And we've got the traceability. If I was to highlight all my requirements, well, we can see that all the source code is there mapping to everything. Right, so next I want to verify these requirements. So once again, I'm going to go to the UniView, and from here I'm going to go and import. Well, let's start by importing the high-level tests. So I'm going to go and import these. So once again, this time we're using high-level tests. Let's do a preview. And there I'm, you can see that I've brought in the reference file, the output file, import file, as well as the, the program. So let's import those. OK, and just like before, I want to automatically update information about my high level test. So I'm going to go and export again what we've done. So save the latest one. And now I've got a, another batch file, which is going to run a Python script. And this is going to generate the external tasks. So again, we have a, a TBM spec file that I'm going to be able to import. So let's go and import this. So there we have the external tasks, and I'm going to accept all those. And now we can see for ex every external test, we have effectively the batch file we need to execute, as well as an input file, the output file, and the reference file. Now, let's bring in the low-level tests. So IBM, OK, import. And once again, I'm going to go and do a preview. In this particular case, I've brought in the test inputs, expected outputs, and we have associated with that a test case file that needs to be created and then regressed to verify these requirements. So let's import these, and we should see we import, and there we can see associated with every low-level requirement, we have a low-level test, and associated with the low-level test, we have a test case file. So I should be able to simply go and execute that. So let's regress that using our unit testing tool, TB Run. This is going to generate a harness. It's then going to build it. It's going to execute it. In this case, I'm using the, the MinGW compiler. But of course, I could run this on just about any embedded target. That test has now executed. And we have a green dot indicating we've just verified this low level requirement. So what I can now do is since we have one requirement that's been verified, I could go and update the results back in DOORS next generation. So let's export the results and we'll export all the requirements or maybe we'll, we'll just export the one we've, we've changed, which is calculate price. So I locate that. Uh, where is it? Well, there it is. We'll select that one and let's go OK. And before I export, I want to indicate what I want to update. And what I want to update is just a verification status. So let's set that, to, that to, to write. Right, now let's start the export. And what we should find is it's now updated that low level requirement. So let's go and check that. Let's close this down. Let's save what we've done. And now let's go back into DOORS next generation. We can find our low level requirements. And if we click on the one we've just updated, so that was calculate price, I think. So scroll down, we should eventually come to calculate price and clicked in the wrong place there. So click on here and we can see if I scroll down that the verification status is now set to, to verified, whereas all the others should be set to not verified.
OK, so hopefully that's given you an idea of how we can integrate the Eldrace Tools tool suite with DAW's next generation. And if you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRA.